Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to share four of my favorite picture books for teaching students how to resolve conflicts in kindergarten, first, and second grade. This video is going to be added to my picture book suggestion playlist over here, and in that playlist I have a bunch of different holiday books, I have books about expressing feelings, I have books about how to be a good friend, so if you're looking for other picture book suggestions I suggest hitting up that list after this video. Now like with most social emotional skills, it will be good for you to teach students exactly how to explicitly resolve a conflict with a friend or at least walk through some strategies. So I will go over that too, but using picture books is also a great way to get a good discussion going for students to come up with their own ideas and kind of relate to the characters in the story. It's more of a low stress way for students to talk about how they might do things instead of using their own examples right away. So I went ahead and gathered up four of my favorite read alouds, so I'm going to go through each one and tell you why I like it for teaching students how to resolve conflict. If you're ready for this video, give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's just dive in. A few weeks ago, I made this video right here about ways to incorporate play in your classroom, and one of the big benefits of allowing unstructured playtime for your K-2 students is that they're going to get in arguments. Now, that might not sound like a benefit, that kind of sounds like a negative part, but if you don't allow your students to kind of get in arguments, they're not going to have those opportunities to resolve them. And getting in arguments, getting in a conflict is a very normal thing that you want to teach your students to be okay with because they will feel confident that they can navigate through it. There are many different ways you can teach your students how to resolve a conflict with a friend, but I'm going to share with you kind of the steps I would teach my students to take. It looks like this. Step one was optional and it was to cool off if necessary. I always made sure to add this because I explained to my students that if we're feeling really angry or if one of the parties is really angry, we might say something we regret and we might not be in a very clear headspace to actually solve the problem. So if necessary, let's give each other a little bit of time to cool off before we resolve this. Step number two was to think about and identify our feelings. Often if our feelings are hurt, it's important for students to kind of think about about how are they feeling right now? Are they sad? Are they angry? Are they a mix of both? This will better help them to express their feelings with the person they're in a conflict with. Which brings us to step three, which is to express and listen. That means this is a time for us to express our own feelings to the person we are in a conflict with and to be sure we're being a good listener and listening to their feelings as well. Oftentimes our students, especially since they are so young, they're really only thinking about their own feelings and that's totally normal. They're like, I'm really angry right now or I'm really sad. They're not also recognizing or being empathetic to the fact that the person they're in a fight with might also be feeling that way. So when we are able to give a space, give our students space to express their feelings and also listen to the others, they can show a little bit of empathy. Step four is to come up with solutions. Now this will be completely dependent on the type of conflict or argument they're having, but students should try to brainstorm some solutions together that they might be okay with. Step five is to go ahead and choose a solution. Now, they don't have to walk through a big, long, arduous process of creating solutions if the first one they offer works for both of them, but sometimes it's helpful to come up with a few different ways we can solve our problem before students actually choose one to try. And step number six is to forgive and move on. Once students have chosen a solution and they're willing to move forward and try it out, they should really try to forgive one another and move past their conflict. Like I said, those six steps are what I used to teach my K through two students. So you might have some other options and ideas. And in fact, if you have any great ideas for teaching students how to resolve a conflict, please drop them down in the comments. But those six steps really walked through the basics of what I try to teach my students to do. Now they are definitely going to need your help and input with this at first, but the goal is if students can get used to this process, they won't always need a teacher to intervene and they can come up with plenty of ways to solve a problem on their own. All right, let's dive into the four books I love for teaching this skill. Okay, the first book I wanna share is called The Fort by Laura Perdue, and it says, can a pirate and a prince learn to share? Now, I love this book because it is about a little boy, a prince, who is walking towards his fort that he has created in the forest, it looks like. And when he gets there, he's like, wait a second, someone has changed my fort. 
Because we find out that while he is not at the fort, someone else is using the same fort as their pirate ship. There's a little girl who also visits this fort and she uses it for her own imagination. But when she gets there, she's like, wait a second, why is there an invitation to a feast written on my treasure map? And both of the kids are starting to feel pretty territorial. So they kind of clear out what the other person has been doing to what they perceive as their own fort. Then they happen to meet at the fort at the same time and they get into a pretty heated argument. You can actually see on the page where the boy and the girl really get some red cheeks, they look very angry in their faces, and they're kind of saying some mean things to one another. But as they're arguing, there's another idea that's brought up about what if we turn the fort into a spaceship? And they both kind of look at each other and they say, wait a second, that is a great idea. Let's make a spaceship. And in the end of the story, they've both worked together to come up with something new that they both like so that they can enjoy the fort together. Now, this is a great read aloud for students because it really illustrates compromise. Both of these kids could have kept fighting and kept saying, no, I want it to be a pirate ship. No, it's a castle. But then neither would get to actually enjoy the fort. So instead they came up with an idea that they both liked so they could both have fun. Now this next book is an all time favorite of mine and it's not necessarily about resolving conflict, but I'll explain it. It is, what do you do with a problem? Now this story definitely seems to focus on being worried or possibly anxious about something and kind of goes over about what you do if you have a problem and how if you're worrying about it all day, the problem gets bigger and bigger instead of just facing the problem that you have. And it's such a beautifully written and illustrated book because your students do have some real problems. They have big, big kid problems, we can call them. Some of them have adult problems that you wish they didn't have to have. And some other of your friends might have small problems that turn into big problems because they're scared to face them. This book is just a wonderful reminder about sitting down, making a plan, and facing the problems so that they don't have control over you. At the end of the book, it says every problem has an opportunity for something good. You just have to look for it. Now, why do I like this book for resolving conflicts? Many of your students are just going to get angry and they'll be able to kind of express themselves right away, but a lot of your students are going to hold this conflict internally. Some of them might not even argue back with someone else or stand up for themselves. Instead, they might just hold it in and it can become a bigger and bigger problem. And this book just shows them that like expressing yourself and if you are feeling upset or have a problem with a friend, it's better to just face it and work out some solutions because there can be a great opportunity that comes through doing that. So like with most beautiful picture books, this one has many different lessons that you can teach. And I kind of love the fact that we can talk about this independently, but we can also tie it into relationships with peers. Book number three I love for resolving conflict is The Squirrels Who Squabbled by Rachel Bright. I love Rachel Bright. She's also the author of The Koala Who Could and The Lion Inside. And her rhyming books are just so cute and great for teaching social emotional skills. Now, before I even dive into what this book is about, Rachel Bright is known for these great rhyming books with wonderful vocabulary and beautifully chosen words. Listen to some of this. As autumn arrived with the sky raging red, the sleepiest creatures got ready for bed. That was just one small example, but honestly, on every page of this book, there is vivid vocabulary, beautifully written words, and oh, I just love them. This story is about these two squirrels named Cyril and Bruce, and as they're getting ready to be holed up for winter, they are on search for their last pine cones. So they're looking around, and Cyril takes a look and finds a pine cone. But he wasn't alone because guess what? Bruce also had his eye on that pine cone. It was the last one of the season. But they saw each other start to run for it. So panicked, they both ran after it. They tumbled, they fought over it. They boinged over bushes and flew through the air. Again, great words, tons of sound words in this book. And they end up almost losing that very last pine cone. When they're finally just so exhausted over squabbling and arguing about this last pine cone, they actually start laughing because they realize we have been very silly. Instead of fighting over this pine cone, we could have just shared. But instead, because they were arguing so much, neither of them got that pine cone. And on the last page, you see a bird flying away with it. So they both lost out. 
But thankfully it's a happy story because they realize that, wait a second, the best thing to share is a laugh with your friend. And you can see them sharing some other food on the branch. Besides just how well this book is written, this is a great one because sharing is one of the biggest solutions we come up with in K through two classrooms because often students are fighting about a highly coveted item, toy, game, something like that. So this type of story really illustrates a very common problem in K through two classrooms. And last but not least, I have another slightly different one that I think is great for K through two classrooms. And this is called, That's Not How You Do It. Now, this book is about a little cat named Lucy, and Lucy knows how to do everything. She knows how to perfectly fold stars. She knows how to paint an elephant. She knows how to do everything, and in fact, all her other friends line up to ask her because they also think she knows how to do everything just right. That's until Toshi arrives. And when Toshi arrives, he does things differently than Lucy. He builds a tower differently than Lucy. He does gymnastics differently than Lucy. And you can see Lucy starting to get very angry. She's like, wait, that's not the right way. That's not how you do it. You have to do it my way. Until at the end, Toshi makes something for Lucy, something that Lucy didn't know how to make. And Toshi very patiently teaches her how to make a paper crane and they have fun playing together. Now, why do I love this book for teaching about resolving conflict? Because a lot of times in K through two classrooms, you might have a student or two who know it all is not the right word, but that's what I'm going to use, but they have trouble thinking that people can do it other ways, right? And that can often start a conflict, especially with younger students. It can often start conflicts with adults too. But the story is such a good reminder that just because somebody does something differently than you doesn't mean that they're wrong. And that just because they do something differently doesn't mean you need to correct them and that it has to be done your way. This is a great reminder to your students to be open and flexible to other people's ideas and to see that your way isn't always the only way. Like I said, a lot of times that no, it has to be done this way can be the start of many of the conflicts you might see in a K through two classroom. So this can be just a gentle reminder that everyone does things differently. So there you have four of my favorite read alouds for teaching students how to resolve conflict. If you have other ones, I'm sure there are a ton of great ones, please leave them down in the comments below. I love checking out books. I love purchasing books for my own boys, especially ones revolving around social emotional skills. So let me know your suggestions. As always, I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video, which right now I'm coming out with videos on Thursday and Sunday mornings. See you in the next one. Bye.